hello and welcome to this video in this video uh, we'll be designing and checking the performance of a horizontal dipole antenna in mm ana software so let's get started let's start in the geometry tab let us name the antenna Forty meter dipole antenna. You can name anything that you like. Since we have considered forty meter band, the center frequency that we are choosing is seven point one megahertz. In India, the forty meter band is between seven and seven point two megahertz, and so we have chosen seven point one as the center frequency. The next step is to draw the antenna. Let us choose the exit plane and draw the antenna. Now dipole will have two different sides to it and we should know the length of each side. The length of each side would be a quarter wavelength. Since it's a 40 meter band, the quarter length would be approximately 10 meters. And that's what we are going to draw for each section of the dipole. This is the one side of dipole. Here you can see wire number one has 10 meters. Let's draw the second section on the other side. Wire number two, 10 meters. Now that we have drawn the antenna, it is time to introduce a source. Since it is a horizontal dipole antenna, the source or the feed point would be in the center of the two sections. In the sources, let us introduce the feed point wire 1 beginning. This means that the feed point will be at the beginning of wire number 1. Let's press enter. You can go to the view tab and see that the feed point head has been introduced at the beginning of wire number one. It is important to remember that we have drawn the dipole antenna along the x-axis. Now that we have designed the antenna and introduced a feed point, it's time to check the performance of the antenna. Let us go to the calculate tab. We have chosen 7.1 megahertz as uh, the center frequency. We have chosen 7 meters as the height at which the antenna is mounted. This means that the feed point is at 7 meters from the ground. Let us choose the material as copper wire. Let us press start. Here you can see that at 7.1, the SWR is 1.21, which is quite good. Let us check the SWR curve to check where the antenna is resonant. It shows that the antenna is resonant at 7.14, but we want it to be resonant at 7.1, which is our center frequency. Since currently the antenna is resonant at 7.14, which is a higher value than our targeted 7.1 megahertz, it means that the antenna element lengths have to be increased such that this resonant frequency of 7.14 goes down to 7.1 megahertz. This can be done automatically in the software using wire scale. Let us see how. We should remember that currently the antenna is resonant at 7.14. We enter the frequency 7.14. I will let you know why in a minute. Let's go to wire scale. Here the software shows the old frequency as 7.14 megahertz. The reason it shows it here is because we entered it here. 
the new frequency that we want is 7.1 megahertz the software has calculated a multiplying factor which will it which will be applied to the wire elements of the dipole such that the antenna starts resonating at new frequency which is 7.1 let's press ok if you go to the view you can see that now the length of the element has increased to 10.056 from 10 meters which we had earlier designed for let us go to calculate and for 7.1 let us press start here you can see that the SWR is perfect 1 for 7.1 megahertz if you plot the SWR curve one more time you can see that the antenna is perfectly resonant at 7.1 megahertz let us check the values for the extreme ends of the 40 meter band at 7 the SWR is 1.65 and at 7.2 the SWR is 1.6 so the extreme ends are not giving all that great values of SWR but they are not all that bad either let us check at some of the common frequencies that are used for example in India 7.123 is one of the common frequencies which is given giving SWR of 1.12 at 7.05 it is giving 1.28 at 7.06 it is giving 1.22 at 7.08 it is giving 1.11 at 7.150 it is giving 1.27 so you can see that most of these center frequencies or frequencies around 7.1 are giving great SWR values. The only problem is at the extreme ends that is 7 megahertz and 7.2 megahertz which is giving a little higher value of 1.65 and 1.6 respectively. What if we want a two transmit uh, on these extreme frequencies what can we do for example at 7 it is giving 1.65 let's say that we would like to use this frequency to operate on in that case we can go to the HF components and go to the section called LC match here you can see that this is the transmitter side and this is the antenna side and in between is a LC antenna coupler suggested by the software. This line is the center of coaxial which goes to one of the dipole elements and this is the shield which goes to the other element of the dipole. If such LC match coupler is constructed in between the transmitter and antenna section, there will be a perfect match between the two and the SWR will get low. This will keep your transmitter very happy. Please note that there will be some power losses occurring in this coupler. In similar way, if we go to 7.2 which is giving SWR of 1.6 and let us check the LC match here you can 
see the LC match suggested by the software for 7.2 megahertz. It should be noted that the position of capacitor has changed from transmitter side to the antenna side. The reason is that now the resistance value at the antenna side is higher than the transmitter side. The capacitor is always on the higher side of the impedance. So if such a coupler is constructed at 7.2 there will be a perfect match between the two sides and the SWR value will go down making your transmitter very happy. Again there will be some power loss occurring in these components. A RC sorry a LC match coupler can be made with a variable inductor, a variable capacitor and a provision to switch the sides of the capacitors on both sides of the inductor as and when required. Let us now see the far field plots. This shows the radiation pattern of the antenna. The figure on the left is the bird's eye view of the antenna from above. And the figure on the right is looking at the antenna from the side. If you remember, we had mounted or constructed the antenna along the x-axis. You can see in the view tab, let me uncheck the currents, that it is designed along the x-axis. So this is the orientation of the antenna. This figure shows us that the radiation is perpendicular to the orientation direction of the antenna. The figure on the right shows the orientation of the antenna along x-axis in the following way. It can be seen that the radiation is mostly upwards from the antenna. If you click at this point, it shows that at elevation angle of 90 degrees, the gain is 7 dBi, which is also the maximum gain of this antenna. At 41 degrees, the gain is 0 and it goes on increasing as we go towards 90 degrees. So we can say that the radiation is between 41 degrees and 90 degrees. You can actually save the power field plots by going to file and save power fields. Here you can name it dipole 40 meters and press save. You have now saved the power field plots. This is important because in case you construct a different antenna in this software, you can save uh, the power field plots of that antenna as well. And then you can compare the two power field plots to know the difference between the radiation patterns of those two antennas. In future videos, I will demonstrate that as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. Please don't forget to press the notification bell so that you will get information as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you for watching.